Milk Makeup, their cooling jelly water tint. They're all over the internet. I purchased these from a milk makeup website because on Sephora they were sold out. They're finally back in stock. I've never played with a makeup product like this. So they each retail for 24 US dollars. There's four shades as of right now. And I also picked up a tiny little buffing brush. Let's review them. Packaging, super cute. I love the vibrant colors. I'm excited. So let's start off first with swatching the shades. Well, first, first, let's open this up and we have to see this texture. Straight up looks like a popsicle, a lollipop, jello, and it's bouncy, feels wet. Look at that, stains right away. So it's essentially a long lasting stain for your cheeks and for your lips. I mean, wow, okay. So this one is spritz. It's so cooling, it feels really nice. I don't smell anything. Next we have splash. They seem really nice. Like a little bit will go a long way, but that's pretty. I like how it's like almost like a watercolor. Then let's do chill. So this is chill. This one's nice red. This one is burst. And it pays off right away, but the texture is so fascinating. Bounce seeds, jelly, so cool. I'm a little concerned how the application is going to be just because I've been looking with some of the reviews and the one thing that a lot of people are saying or they're agreeing is the application. It's a little finicky. You have to find what works best for you. Even Milk Makeup themselves are saying it dries down really fast this formula, so work one cheek at a time. This cooling jelly tint from Milk Makeup might be a good and underpainting formula like a blush just because of the staining method place it underneath and then go with some makeup on top to give it more of that very effortless look kind of want to go with this shade right here this one is chill has a little bit of a glow they're not matte but i mean i can't really move that it comes off on the finger but on the back of the hand mm -mm. wow it's not really coming off and they do say to remove this use an oil-based cleanser so this right here, I have my toner that I use for my skincare and that's actually taking it off pretty good. So I do have makeup on my face, on my cheeks. So on this side, let's try fingertips first. See how far that gets us. <laughs> so gently swipe or swirl the stick directly onto your lips and cheeks. It dries fast. So work one cheek at a time and blend quickly with your fingers, brush, or a sponge. And you can also build up for your desired payoff, color payoff. And then just start working quickly to blend that in. Let's take the tiny little brush and I'm just gonna gently swirl. Yeah, you have to work with it right away. Still doesn't look as diffused as I, was, as I would want it to be, but that feeling is really nice, that cooling sensation. They also say you can place these into your fridge to give that extra benefit of the cooling sensation on your cheeks. I mean, that looks pretty but I feel like it's not really where I want it to be. Personally, what, how I would apply these, I would take a brush like so, or even something like this, Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Blush Brush, and directly apply it to the brush and then go onto my cheeks and build my look that way for this blush. Cause I find that this way it's no. Kind of got rid of a lot of that color and you can still see right there. It's like a spot where I just applied it. So let's do this. Let's apply it to the brush. Not sure if that's enough or too much. And I'm just gonna start stamping where I want that blush to sit. I think I would have the most control this way. You don't get that cooling sensation, but if you want an easier blending time with this blush, I think this way is the way to go. I'm gonna try this brush. Ooh, this one gave a beautiful payoff. Oh my, okay. This is a little too much. Wow, okay, okay, we can definitely build it up. I'm gonna go back with my foundation brush that I used with whatever is left and soften that. You can, you can see that glow. And I was looking and definitely is picking up makeup when I applied it to my cheeks. So like I said, this might be a great blush for underpainting. Now let's go on sponge on the left side. I want that cooling sensation, so we're gonna go straight onto the cheeks. It pays off right away. Softly dampen sponge and just start working this in. 
yeah, blendability is very finicky with this. See what I mean? I'm gonna have to use my foundation brush, go over that. Nope, don't like that method. I didn't think the blendability was gonna be this finicky. Cause when I was looking at some of these reviews online, they made the blendability look so easy and seamless and flawless and effortless. Yeah, no. I'm gonna reiterate, I think this is gonna be great for underneath your makeup with under painting technique because it does stain, has pretty great pigment payoff the more you swipe onto your cheeks and it stains. Like it's going to stay on all day long, which is great for longevity. But for blendability, not great. I'm gonna take a little bit of my Milani Cream Bronzer and work this underneath. I'm going to do a wear test for the next part of this review because I do want to see how it's going to wear. Make an assumption that it's going to be there all day long. It's not going to go anywhere. I do like the way my cheeks are looking. The texture is not getting enhanced because it does have that uh, dewy finish. It feels good. It's not tacky. It's not sticky. It doesn't have a powder finish, but on this side, I have a pimple right there and it, it stained my pimple. <laughs> the formula is really fascinating, really fun to play with, but the blendability, very tricky. I haven't tried it, applying it to this, the sponge. Let's do it just out of curiosity. And go in this way. Yeah, that way it also works to a point. This side just looks bad. This one, the right side looks much better. Yeah, I think that works also. It gives it more of a diffused watercolor on your cheeks. That's pretty too. I do like the concept. I think it's really fun. It's fresh, it's cooling. <laughs> that cooling feature, if you don't apply it to your cheeks, you know, it doesn't really make sense. Okay, that feels good on the lips. Ooh. It's as if I was eating popsicles. Let me grab a lip liner. I'm going to outline my lips, but I like that. That feels really nice on the lips. Let's apply it again. So far, it looks pretty nice on the lips. Sometimes with a stain, the stain will exaggerate those lines or the wrinkles on my lips. I think the lip liner is helping. <laughs> Next part of this review is the wear test for the Milk Makeup, the cooling jelly water tint for your cheeks and lips. It's been two hours for the Milk Makeup, the cooling jelly water tint for the cheeks and lips. I have had a little bit of snacking sessions happening. I haven't eaten a full meal yet, so I'm not sure how the lips are going to be. But as of right now, they don't feel dry. They're still stained, and I think it's coming off a little bit just because, you know, I'm drinking, eating snacks. Cheeks still look really nice, still, you know, still there, but I feel like I'm looking in this light now in front of the window, and you can see kind of a little bit more patchy, patchy areas. And that pimple is, it looks inflamed, but it's not, it's just stained. <laughs> I will keep you guys updated, especially around dinner time. I'm making a cheesy, like cheesy burger pasta. So that's gonna be probably a little bit oily. We'll see if it's going to get rid of the stain off my lips. I'm assuming it probably will, but I think there will still be something left on my lips after dinner. But again, I'll keep you guys updated. Cooking dinner now. So it's five hours since I applied the makeup. This is what we're looking like. Still something there, but you can see where a lot of the tint is disappearing, especially in the corners of the mouth in the center, but it doesn't look, it doesn't look bad. Just finished eating dinner and this is what I'm looking like. I think a lot of the lip liner has kind of disappeared, but the stain, I think it's looking a little more even on my lips. A lot of the color has disappeared from eating and drinking, but it doesn't look bad. I thought it would settle a little more into my lines right there. But it actually looks pretty nice. And I like the way it's disappearing on my lips, the stain. It's really pretty. Cheeks popping. Can't really say anything much about the cheeks because that blush is there to stay. All right, I'm gonna see you guys at the very end of the night for the final update, hoping to get at least like 12 to 13 hours out of this, and I'll see you guys then. We're ending the review here, the full wear test for the Milk Makeup, the jelly tint for your cheeks and your lips. The cheeks still look decent, they still look really good, but the lips, the stain, 
It's very subtle. I'm gonna cleanse my skin right now. For my lips, that tint was so effortless. I'm definitely gonna be wearing that a lot. But for my cheeks, I'm not blown away with the jelly tint sticks from Milk Makeup. Do I think you need this blush or this tint? No, you don't. Like I said, I like it for the lips a lot. So if you were looking for a really effortless tint stain for your lips, again, like I'm gonna keep playing with it because I think it's a really cool concept. I like the ease of the stick, the twist up stick, and I really like it for my lips, but I'm gonna try it with different formulas and see if I find a better way or a better finish for this blush. But I'm gonna end it here. Thank you for watching Spending Time With Me, and I'll see the next one very soon.